Hello and welcome to Armed with Controllers. This is Fabs and today it's the latest instalment in the Final Fantasy V for Job Fiesta. So, um, since when we last saw me play this, I've been traversing the end zone, fighting loads of bosses, and we are on the way now to what I would say has been thus far the most difficult fight in the game. This is assuming, of course, we ignore Omega and his crazy overpowered bossness. No, it is an absolute belter of a fight coming up, so, folks. So, first off, I'm just escaping this last area of the um, initial initial half of this dungeon, also known as let's reuse graphic tile sets because we're lazy. And here we have the very final area of the game. This is an absolute nightmare to traverse because all of the random encounters, they're all... Um, they're, they're all boss level, you don't get any experience out of either, so it's a pain in the behind. But first, here's Gilgamesh randomly. Yes, you might remember in the previous, um, one of the previous videos, he was banished to the end zone by X-Death for... I don't really know why, to be honest, he just decided, I don't know, off you go Gilgamesh, bye. Okay, so... As you can see here... He's proving not to be the uh, most difficult opponent at the moment. As so, he's clearly uh, in a bit of a crazy state at the moment. Only just recognised us. Oh, Gilgamesh, you crazy comic relief, relief character. Will you ever learn? Now, I think this conversation in particular really suffered from the translation because it's completely nonsensical. As near as I can tell, I gather he's meant to be recognised thinking, oh, are you guys ghosts or something? Um, I can't find the exits, this is annoying, and then, I, I don't know, it, it's really weird and one-sided. And it's difficult to tell what, what's being said. It, it's like a proper stream of consciousness. It's quite bizarre. So I suppose, yeah, that, that is the uh, downside of playing the um, PlayStation version which uses a translation that was originally designed, designed for the um, Western release of Final Fantasy V, but that never happened. Well, yeah, back when it was fine on the SNES. So, there we go. So, just, you know, when they did release this in the West, they just reused the old script they had kicking around, and we all suffered for it. So, yes, if I expect if you want to enjoy this game the way it's meant to be enjoyed, theoretically, you'd be better off with the Game Boy Advance version, if only because that one takes a script and it offers a very pragmatic ad adaptation by amp amping up the uh, already prevalent humour. I'm really just having a bit of a laugh about it. Okay, so, um, as I mentioned earlier, the enemy, the random fights here are all nightmares, so I am skipping them because as it stands, you would just be watching me run away and then have to, to re-heal everyone afterwards. It was tedious playing it, and I expect to be tedious watching it. So wow, look, there's a chest there. I wonder what's in that chest. Let's not go for it, because it's a boss that will kill me very quickly. So there you go, yes. In that chest is the other of the um, two crazy bosses. You know, sort of last time we saw Omega. Um, what we have here in that chest is Shinryu, the Dragon Lord. Oh crap. Exactly, so uh, let's just leave him there. So. And here we have a random green dot, which is our next boss. So first off, we're going to have a bit of fun, um, you know, make sure everyone's nice and healed up. Make sure that we've um, got enough MP as well. And uh, one other little thing, I'm going to move uh, Exchange Soft for the Wonder Wand in my item list. You see, what the Wonder Wand does is when my Red Mage, or any other um, rod using character, uh, when my Red Rage goes to item list, you can actually select your weapon and use it as an item against the opponent. Now the Wonder Wand is particularly awesome for this, because what this means is it, when you use it as an item, you cast the turn, which restarts the battle entirely. Which, for this upcoming fight, is very useful, if only because it means that I have to go back again and again and again, you know, fighting Gilgamesh through this interminably irritating boss rush of sorts, they're just the random encounters. So, in addition, uh, you'll notice I changed the equipment 
all my uh, members have. Given but uh, Hermes shoes so you can run quickly. And I've given uh, the rest all protect ring so they'll have regen. You see this boss here, primarily a magic user, doesn't use um, physical attacks so elf cloaks out the window. And all the magic it does is reflected off of itself so reflect rings are no help. So if, as long as I have uh, Butts here with the Hermes shoes, which give him instant haste, um, this means that I can at least do one source of you know, very prominent, very strong damage quickly and effectively, which I need because these barriers are incredibly irritating. So the thing is, Necrophobe there, he is completely protected by the barriers. So I have to destroy them first to get to him. Problem is, what these guys do, they cast uh, you know, either Holy or Flare off themselves. So yeah, it's very strong, and if I've got four of them doing this top level magic at me at any one time, it stings. So I have to really whittle them down as quickly as possible, or else that's it, I'm game over. Because as it stands, my healing output cannot match the four accounts of a thousand nearly a turn. Three. It's okay, because we've got the magic lamp, we've got Leviathan. So yes, the magic lamp is crucial for this battle, if only because um, each of these barriers has around 8,800 HP. So with um, those two combined, I've done about half their life already now, which is really helpful. I know, God, Rena's dead already. But one of them is dead as well. Excellent. And we've got Faris jumping. Woo. Now you see, there we go. Because I've got um, Butts there attacking quickly, I am going to be able to take out his barriers swiftly. Now here's a complete, you know, hope spot. Because that's, oh look, Odin just killed them. Nope, uh, everything's back to how it was. I don't know why it does that, it's so annoying. Oh yeah, that's another thing, if they want to hit more than one person, they'll go and use uh, level 3 magic uh, multiplied. Thanks, guys. Yeah, see, the real irritating thing is, though, Faris does have an Aegis shield. That's 33% chance of blocking any magic attack. Why didn't it work, then? Come on, really now. So I think what will be best at the moment is, that's annoying, is yeah, to kill all but one of them. This will give me a chance to quickly heal up and get my team back to full before I take down the final barrier and then kill Necrophobe. Whee. So yes, um, this is not an easy battle, particularly when it comes to limitations imposed on me because my Geomancy is useless at this point. Um, there are three spells that I can use from Geomancy. Wind Slash, which does the same as usual, Twister and Sonic Boom, neither of which work on non-heavy enemies. And of course it's a boss, it's going to be heavy. So yeah, I've got a really one in three chance, two in three chance of wasting my turn in that case. So I'm having to go myself down to Elixirs. You yeah, see, I don't know about you, but I really suffer from um, rare item syndrome in JRPGs. Because I find that, you know, things like elixirs uh, or mega elixirs or a anything that has a really awesome um, ability but is very difficult to get get in bulk, you don't want to use them even when you can because you're terrified you'll need them for something else at the end. I mean, it, it even crosses over to the final battle sometimes, I find. I don't want to use this mega elixir. I might need it for later. There will be no later, you fool. So yes, luckily though, um, Definitely the elixir was the best move there because um, good old Faris with her 2000 HP, it would have taken far too long and increased the chance of her being dead uh, to do it manually via Cure 2 or potions or whatever. But never mind, just you know, Krill, you know, happily uh, just casting rays repeatedly. Okay, that's, that's a lot of them dead. Now we've got the Necrophobe. Yes, the Invincible Barrier is. There's no choice! Ah. Now I have to taste his power. Who to the fool? Well. And he starts by giving everyone sunglasses! Which is kind of annoying. Okay, so definitely do need to uh, first guy who's boss though. So let's summon um, I can't remember his name. Hydra. Yeah, I'll call it Hydra. Yay. Now see, one nice thing about Necrophobe is he has almost no defense both magical and physical, which means that 
you know, when you hit, you are going to be seeing a lot of damage, which is very, very helpful. Okay, magic lamp again? Yeah, magic lamp. And it's carbuncle, thereby making it completely pointless to uh, do cure two, and now I kind of have to rely on things like elixirs. Oh well. The plus side, did you see that 8,000 damage? That was pretty awesome. And off goes Krill. Right, we can revive her later. There's a waste of a turn, thanks to Shote. Woo. See, um, what Shote does is it petrifies a target. Of course, this is a boss, so um, immune to petrification. Yay. Okay, let's uh, quickly cure up Nina, because otherwise everyone dies and it's painful. Okay, who next, Magic Lamp? Ah, Earth Wall. Golem. Golem is one of the best summons in this game. Damn near invaluable. As you can see, what he does, he has a certain amount of HP and he'll absorb that much um, in terms of physical attacks from your opponents. So having him up is a lifesaver when you've got a bunch of people with really low health and you need to cure them. And plus, oh, good lord, 97, that's the highest amount of damage I've ever seen me do. I'm so happy with that. So yeah, basically Golem, pretty damn awesome. Let's just waste a turn with uh, Geomancy because, you know, I like to say things and ignore them. And down goes Krill. Yay! Oh well, let's just uh, blindly swing at the Necrophobe. What's this? Oh, Gilgamesh is here, to, on the opposing side. Ah, nuts. But, yay! He made it, apparently. What's Gilgamesh gonna do? We didn't leave you, no you, you ran off! Oh dear. Now see, one thing I will say, the text in this game, the battle text it is, moves so slowly. And this is after I've turned it up to a max. I'm sure they did this on purpose for this particular moment because it's, you know, people talking. But see, I can't tell who's saying what, though. that's the problem. What's your problem? You'll be the Okay, I take the necrophobe saying that. Which sounds really weird. It doesn't sound like the kind of thing that guy's going to say. Oh well. So, basically, one thing I can do is if I can do 10,000 damage to Necrophobe in a single turn now, as in that, I think, as of this point. No, nope, maybe not then. Um, you can actually avert what's about to happen and access a super secret ending. But nope, he's going to instead talk to an unconscious girl instead. About her grandfather. Yeah, that's the kind of chat up one I like when they're unconscious. Okay, she's talking in her sleep and everything. Creepy. And he's gonna, now going to talk to someone who's up in the sky. Been up in the sky for a long time. Oh dear, you sexist pig Gilgamesh. <laughs> Will you ever learn? See, even Faris is like, what the hell? Yep, the ellipsis. Okay, what the... He's doing something weird there. So yeah, at, at this point now, um, the battle is over uh, in our favour. I mean, we can do anything we like to Necrophobe. No damage will be dealt. Which is weird. And stop spoiling the animals. And be nice... I think she's already learned how to be nice to others. But what's wrong with spoiling animals? They're pretty cool. Oh well, never mind. Yep, you, you two can just say ellipsis. And butts. What have you got to say, butts? Well, two butts, sorry. Just once more. Go on. Ah, oh, don't worry. Play Decidia Duodecim. You'll get that chance. Ah. Oh. Isn't that heartwarming and sweet? I assume that's one random member of the party saying that. You're doing something else. Okay, Sonic Boom. Now that works. Yeah. It's weird that he didn't do that magic to me when I was, um... Well, yeah, after I took out the barriers. Very strange. Never mind. Okay. Huh. Ooh, that's harsh. I wonder how much HP, um, Gilgamesh has. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> oh, fantastic. And so, Gilgamesh sacrifices himself to save the party. Godspeed, old friend. Godspeed. And on the plus side, we now are free of this nightmarish 
arsehole of a boss. Phew. Now, I don't know, but I think the music's a bit too happy at the moment, considering we just lost... You know, someone just sacrificed himself for us. It's a bit of a shame. Oh well, on the plus side, what do we get? We get a save point! Yay! Not just that, the final save point in the game. So, in that case, join me later for what will probably be the final video. We're going to show X-Death who's boss, and yeah, we'll, we'll show that tree who's boss. So, game hard my friends, game hard.